Welcome to day number 20 of harvest. Day number 10 of soybean harvest, or at least that's what I think today is. They're, it's all kind of blending together. We are basically right at halfway done with all of our corn. We have 10 acres left at Uncle Orland's, which is where we broke down at last night. We're gonna try to get that done this morning. And then on our intercrop plot, we had the actual plot in the middle. We had the control on the right side. And then we had a high management 10 acres on the left side. We still need to get that out. Once we get that done, we're gonna be going right underneath that wind turbine. There's about 80 acres over there. So that's gonna be our goal for today, to get all of those done. Because once those fields are done, everything we have left is right around Dad's house. So we have the field around Dad's, we have the Hanson farm, we have the Bush farm, and we have the field west of Dad's. Then we are D-U-N. Oh, what the You got a new haircut. You see, it's new haircut. Muy bien. We have that row right there. The gathering chains just stopped feeding and a whole bunch of material plugged up inside of it. All the other gathering chains are going. This one stopped even when I reversed it. Zach's looking on the back side. Ricardo's digging it out. We're not sure what's going on. So what ended up happening? We didn't open it yet, so we, we uh, replace the new gearbox. We gotta open it up. I mean, it was unlocked. We came this morning, juggled a little bit, unlocked. But then, when you start moving it, you 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 feel like it clanking. So we don't know yet. We gotta open up. So you just put a new one in here. Yes. This row. Yep. yep. That's a brand new with a new roller too. Shout out to the Franco guys. Oh man, they got out of here at seven o'clock this morning to get that back together for us. So they've been on it. And I, I called Lucas at like midnight last night. This has got to be some sort of record around here. Cooper and Zach got the grain vac set up this morning. And look at that. We don't even have a pile of corn there anymore. We're gonna have a little bit of a balancing of schedules today among all of us. I think I'm gonna be running the combine, but Cooper is going to be running off for another corn head demo. And then dad, has a cremation that he needs to dig later. Sometimes farming is just not all about driving the equipment like we would always like it to be, but we have jobs to do and we just get them done. No Ricardo. Doesn't look like Zach's in that tractor. No one's in the combine. Oh, there they are. Cooper got everything fueled up. Everything should be all good to go now. Turn on the monitor. I will say, I, I'm looking forward to getting out of this tangled up corn. It, I'm also looking forward to getting out of this particular field because right here, I'm on 111 days, champion 61A22. And then over there, I have 108 days. So every other pass, it changes. And for this one, my settings are completely different than that one. When I'm in that one and I have these settings on, then I'm spitting a whole bunch of grain out of the back of the combine. And when I'm in that one and I have these settings on, I basically grind the grain up into about a pulp. Now that I think about it, you don't really grind grain into a pulp. You grind it into a powder. You grind it into flour. We're making grain flour over there. So every time I turn around, I have to completely rechange all these settings. Luckily, I can do it by just pressing these buttons here, but it, it's 2023. You know how much physical labor and trauma this is causing me? This 108 day has given me some fits. Just look at my rotor loss and my sieve loss as I'm going along. I'm doing three and a half miles an hour right now. We're running at a 58% engine load. I should be below that bottom line. I keep flashing up and all of a sudden, hey, we're in the yellow. And every now and again, it'll just flash all the way to red. I have my concave super closed. I actually opened it up a little bit. I was running it at six. I wasn't sure if I was getting more harm by cranking it that tight. Sped my rotor up. I have my sieves way open. 25s is as wide as they go. And I'm still getting sieve loss. I don't know. About the only thing I've been able to do is just slow down. Like, look at that. Like, what's going on? I'm not in high yielding corn by any means. This is doing 170 right here. I will be ready to get out of this number. Hey, 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 look at that. We have a Uncle Orland's farm with no corn in it anymore. Ooh, and we got the neighbors across the road picking. I really hope we don't have any more wind damage in any of these other fields because this was, I'm not gonna lie, it was not very fun. But it is what it is. 
We got it done. Gray Freightliner's full. Dad is just up there on top of the hill. He's blocking the corner because we're just going to road this home. We just got to okay, go right there. Oh, they're going to do an unload on the go. We made a quick little sneaky pass through the bin site here so that way we could pick up some sandwiches. Mom made these for us today and she even spelled my name right. Oh, now our intercrop data comes in. We're going to be picking some Champion 58A21 right here. This is my 10 acre high management control compared to the intercrop, which is right beside it. No, oh, before we get too crazy, you always got to do this. It's not fun, but we got to check, see what kind of job we're doing on the ground as well as in the green tank. Okay, we got a fair amount of cob in there. Let's see what we got for cracked grain. Ooh, nice big kernels. Got a crack piece right there. There's a crack piece right there. One right there. Okay, I can probably slow my rotor down a little bit. One right there. Uh, we got some butt shelling from the... Oh, wow. Where did that ear come from? It hasn't been through the combine yet. That either came from the neighbors over there or... The animal got this. Okay, we are splitting them long way, so we are way too tight with our concave right now. These are still a little wet too. They're a little bendy. Man, those stinking iron weeds. What's this? These three are the ones that I can mainly do most of my adjustments with. In corn, we have nothing to recycle, so this is basically the recycler. So I really only mess with these two right here when we're not running. So I'm gonna open up the concave more. And hopefully that's going to give us a little bit more whole stocks. I'm just going to press this button a few times. Let's do like a 20, let's try a 21. See what that looks like. I might, eh, we'll leave the top sieve for now. See what kind of job, because this is going to make less broken cobs. And so then we won't have to adjust this yet. If we have less broken cobs, that might be okay. Oh yes, I'm also going to hit this button and we're gonna slow that rotor down to 360. No, oh, we're pegged to sieve loss. Let's crank that guy open. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Our cobs are still plenty broken. Wow, it's a little more solid one. Oh, look at that. Rubber cob. Ah! Those are open plenty wide. I can literally put a whole cob in there. I'm gonna tighten them down a little bit. I want them to stay up so that way they walk out the back. I don't want this falling down there. This is the top sieve. Or in other words, this one. And then below it that we couldn't see back there is this one. So when those corn cobs pass through, they fall into this one and then they get caught by this one and then they get brought back up into the concaves and then they get re put through this. So in corn, we don't recycle any material like we do in beans. So that's why I have this one open because if it falls through this one, it's going back here in the green tank. Well guys, I don't know how to say this, but see up above the green sign there? You look at the green sign, up above there's a rod sticking over. That's another safety railing falling apart. It absolutely bothers me big time. And the one reason is you guys seen on the one video where the one rod shot out way out here. I think more and more about this every day. Little Eddie, our little grandchild. When you build something like this, you expect the safetiness to be number one. I don't know, but if little Eddie's out here playing or something, the safety railings, safety, safety. I guess it don't matter, but some of the big shots know about it. I guess they don't, it's not their kids. It's not their family that's working around this. That's what bothers me. It'd be one of my family members that gets killed. How would you guys, you buy something, you want it safe. That is not safe. There is so much stuff on this, not safe. And oh, there's so much I'd love to say to you guys. I just. But we're gonna crawl up there and take that down. I gotta go up there and check something anyhow. Uh, that's the one I gotta get off. Uh,
this is. And it's a safety railing. Like I said, it just makes me sick. I don't know. You're supposed to think you're safe when you come up on this stuff. Just, it's, I don't know, it's heartbreaking. -y. I don't really want my kids up here. You guys, something too to think about, you know, when you're building something, you want a company that's looking out for safety. Things break off. That's really solid. And then you're gonna come over here. This one, look at that, it's ready to break. And look how far that is down there. That is far. I can't even go out on that platform because I don't even know if that's safe. These things shake so much, water's running in the holes into our corn. So now we get wet corn. I try to keep my cool about everything, so I apologize, but when it comes safety to my family, my kids, their kids now. Oh, look at this. This is the one rod I just threw off from up there that's falling apart. I just threw that off. Just think if the wind would have blew it off or like that one that came off, that's stuck in the ground. That's stuck in the ground. Just think if that was one of the grandkids walking around here and that shot off, blow their head right off. I, I can't say it any different. And that's kind of what's very heartbreaking, but I, I, I I'm lost in words. I really am. When I come over here and I see there's so much I would love to show you guys on safety stuff. And I, I don't know. Maybe safety stuff isn't important anymore. I guess I think my life is important. My kids' life's important. Little Ellie, her life is important. But in the meantime, I'm just going to show it the way it is, guys. I mean, why sugarcoat it? Show all the good, forget about some of the bad. I guess honesty to us is more important. You guys need to make choices when you build stuff too. Safety is pretty important for your family. They take your money, they don't mind that, but then when there's problems, Zach, you broke it in. The right side just stopped working. Left side's working, seems nice and clean. That side, nope. So, either it could be drive shaft, it could be something in the gearbox, or the shaft down below broke right at just on the other side of the gearbox. It is something in the gearbox. It could be the chain. Uh, probably the chain. I mean, that's really the only thing that can break in there. I doubt a gear exploded. I haven't got the chance to eat these yet. Doo -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo. Safety first. Hey, Ellie. Yeah, you were gonna come turn it on if I didn't, weren't you? That looks yummy. We have a diamond chain on the inside, and for whatever reason, one of the links right there broke. Long story short, when we went to go put the cotter pin back in, it, it broke when we just got it bent, so it was locked in place. So Cooper and Zach ran in town to get one. Uh, Cooper's not the most cheery right now, so we just let him be, but it's done. We're going back in the field. Give you a little driveway reference size here. We have a 30 foot head on and we got all kinds of room. I'm glad we built the driveway as big as we did. It seems obnoxious when there's nothing in it, but when you have stuff in it, it's awesome. It's like a machine shed. I've adopted the same mindset. You can never build a shed big enough. Same thing with the driveway. Oh, whoops, sorry, Cooper's alfalfa field. We're just running through ya. We just don't want to get in the way of that target over there. Fun fact, that target is exactly 111 yards away from my office window. And it can be hit with a pew pew that you hold on to with just your hands. One of those. Like, not against your shoulder. Like, like you hold it out front. Oh man, we forgot the safety bar again. We always forget the safety bar. They should have a thing that sticks up so you can do it from up there. Or they have everything else on hydraulics. Why don't they have a hydraulic safety bar? So they can press the bladder from in the cab. This is 2023. This is putting too much stress on my, my body having to do physical labor here. 
Golly. So this is what a conan is supposed to look like when it doesn't get smacked by wind or disease. We have nice, straight, healthy plants that are loading on the go right now. It's doing phenomenal where we're at. This is Champion 58821. We accidentally got the wrong thing plugged in there, but that's looking good, about 21%. All right, guys, we got to go up here. This is our hopper bottom. This has been kind of a bottleneck from day one, too. This is something we had put up probably, well, it's been over 10 years ago, because I know we took out a 10-year loan on it. And uh, that has paid off when the 10 years. And I don't know if you can see in here. I got to stay down below that cone we don't want to put, see the cone where it goes down? We don't want to put more than 5,000 bushels in here tops. And it's sad because it's an 18,000 bushel bin. But that got messed up too when they moved it over. So what we do, we put 5,000 bushels in this. And then we put about 4,000 in the overhead. And then the trucks are holding. You gotta go back, get a soil, not a soil, sample of corn so we can test it. Make sure the dryer's keeping up. Kind of a Mickey Mouse setup, but that's where I take my sample. I take my sample out there. So I got this long handle. So I don't have to take my hand in there. Looks like we gotta go up high. Cooper's up on top of the, the leg here, so we'll go up and find out what's going on there. Where's the out coming up here? Uh, up there. I'm not sure how Cooper got up there. When they built this outfit, they told us after they got it up, we got some pretty sharp bins here. You might have some troubles with plug up, but not much we can do about it. So now Cooper's up there. Trying to get the corn to go down it. I suppose if it's super, 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 super dry corn, we weren't having an issue, but then when you get like 20, 21% corn, it's just too much of a tight, <laughs> which they warned us on that. And it's like, well, if you knew that at the time, then why did you build it like that? It's been the perfect time to build it right. So hopefully we can get it to go. We need to put some corn in the overhead. There's little Ellie waiting for us. Hi, Ellie. Hi girl. All right, we're gonna try it again. We're just gonna pump a little bit of corn up there and make sure everything's working before we get crazy. Ricardo! Where are you? <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez! We're not gonna talk about it. Hey, there's raccoon. Run, little buddy, run! Holy crap, that is some tall corn. We're sitting at my eye level right now straight out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Normally the corn's like down here. <laughs> like that tall. <laughs> this is hands down the tallest corn I have ever harvested before. We are doing three miles an hour at a 100% plus engine load. This is pulling hard. Well, that's because it's 25%. Whew, we actually got it. <laughs> A decent jump on today with the high yielding corn that we're in being right next close to home. We got the overhead bin full. We got the hopper bottom bin as full as we're willing to put it. Semis are full. Dad's gonna run the dryer a little bit. We're well before midnight tonight. This is a treat. We're gonna get some sleep. Before we go inside, shout out to Northwest Lighting Systems for hooking us up with these LED lights. We have one here and we have one on the other side of the building. But look how far that lights up over there. Literally illuminates my neighbor's entire house all the way up to the tops of their trees. My entire house at the top, there's actually a shadow back there. My trees are completely lit up and the best part is we got in the field. You can see the shadow of that building. <laughs> That's incredible. Whew. Then we got all those lights over there, which we have like 12 more that need to be hooked up. So once that's fully done over there, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be like a city. Oh, we got a full eight hours of sleep last night. That was incredible. We got our breakfast with us. We've been working on making sure we got our colors. We got our whites and purples in this cup. We got our yellows, 
uh, uh, kind of a tainted white, and then we got our brown. Zach and Cooper already grabbed the fuel trailer, and they got everything fueled up and ready to go. Combine needed half a tank, and the 340 needed three quarters of a tank. Dad's been running the dryer. He ran it late last night. I think they've already transferred some loads this morning from the overhead down into the hopper bottom. We got Ricardo over there. I'm going to be running the combine. Zach's running 340. Oh, man, it is windy today. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm tired of this thing blinking at me every time I turn it on. What needs... How do I go to the wrench? I have no idea. We got Uncle Orland's done just right on the other side of those trees. We got the high management part of the intercrop inter comparison done right over there under that wind turbine. So now we're underneath the main wind turbine. We've got a center 80 acres of the farm. We got some little point rows over here. That's all we have left over here though. I wonder if Brent was the person's first name or their last name. Maybe V1300 was their middle name. You think that sounds like a weird middle name, but have you seen what Elon Musk named his children? We've been going back and forth for a little while now. We're running into a problem. We have a little sliver right here, right between these colored lines. That is a hybrid of corn that Cooper wanted to try. And it's like, 6% wetter than everything else we've been in. It's like 25%, which our dryer cannot dry corn that wet. So we're gonna have to leave this. I'm on my last pass here. And then we're going to dad's house. The stuff last night that was 10 feet tall. Yeah, that. That's what's gonna be staying here. We're just gonna have to dr let it dry down for a little bit. They're talking some good temperatures this week. So when you have good temperatures, like 60 plus, you can dry a point a day out in the field, which ideally a bigger dryer would solve the solution. But for right now, we're just gonna have to let it sit. We had a nice breeze. They actually shut the wind turbines down because it's too windy for them apparently. The corn's kind of whipping around. I know, it doesn't seem like it makes much sense that the wind turbine shut down when it's too windy. But what happens is they get spinning too fast and then they can't control it. So they kind of like the mid-20s is sweet spot. Anything much over that, they have to shut them down. Thank you. Sounds like everything at the vent site is full right now, or as full as we can get the wet holding stuff. We should be able to store another 15,000 bushels in the wet holding vents. So that's a little bit. I don't even want to call it disappointing. It's just, it's like we, we could be more efficient than we are. But it is, it is what it is. We're going to head down to the field west of Dad's house now. We're going to get it outlined. It's going to be a little slower. Might allow the dryer to catch up a little bit. And then once we get on the long rows over there, we'll just get everything full and probably just call it an early day. So the farm up there on the hill is the bush farm. That's Dad's house. So the field around Dad's house is there. Got the Hanson farm right across the creek. And then this is the field west of dad's house. We ended up getting it outlined and then we got the terrace part done. For the most part, we got just a little bit. Eh, no, that is long rows right there, actually. Never mind. I take back my words. But we got everything outlined. So it's all ready to go back and forth. Because everything's full for the night now. See you tomorrow, combine. Don't mind me just coming through with the old 12 passenger van. I should probably pay attention to driving so I don't run into that giant rock. Ooh, we got a sunset tonight. Wow. I think Dad ran this till 2 o'clock in the morning. Again, last night, got a pretty good dent out of it. So now we are on semi-duty today. First load of the morning. Corn coming out of the field right now, though, probably about that 20% or so. And the stuff we picked last night in the overhead bin is about 22%. So we're just going to do just a little bit of blending. This load dryer moving. Now when we get back, they should be full, so we're gonna boogie along. We redid a lot of waterways this last spring, so it opened up the efficiencies of fields. So now instead of having like five little fields in one big field, we just have one big field. So our rows have gotten a lot longer, and it has definitely made it a lot harder to keep up with the semis, which is a good problem to have. There we go, just like clockwork, just pulled in. Oh, are you full, Red Volvo? Hey, we're gonna put these stairs here, thank you. Oh yeah, we're full. Ricardo's already full and so is this semi. Yeah, I'm thinking bigger dryer. Gonna be on a list of items coming to the farm. 
Hopefully soon. Still dumping. That's crazy. I had that semi full. Dad just had to pull it onto the pit after I left, and I did a nine mile round trip and switched semis. He's still dumping when I got back. Funny, you can always tell when the bin fans are on. Yeah, it's some air pushing out. Oh, again. I think this could potentially be the last semi that we're going to be filling this afternoon. The overhead bin's full. The wet holding bin is full. Well, it's as full as we're willing to fill it. And this semi is full. The Both red semis are full. This car's going to be full here in a minute. I'm sure Cooper's already full. Ricardo's sitting over there. He's full. Well, that didn't take very long. We're going to take a look inside this bin, see how full it actually is. We basically fill it to this green bar. Don't like going any more than that. Oh, okay, yeah, we're right up here. That's full enough. We do have it coned down, so at least it's level. It's not heaped. Yeah, we don't want to put any more in there. This sounds bad, but our gauge of how full we can fill the bin is based off by, we see the cracks down here starting to spread, and we have too much weight up there. Particularly this one, and there's one over here, nice big one. And then kind of where they all come together there, as well as right there. This will actually, this side will actually start to lift up. And it, it develops a nice lip right here if there gets to be too much weight. And we're not even 50% full with this bin. Not even close, like 30%. And we used to have this bin full all the time when it was in its old location. And we didn't even have as much as a hairline crack. It actually took me and Ron 24 man hours in an excavator, well, a backhoe with a 800 pound jackhammer on it to break up that pad. So yeah, this one is it's not holding up. We got the combine situation figured out. So we can combine pass, but we can't take it away from here very fast yet. Everything got full four hours of running, which good yielding corn, we'll take it. But it's three o'clock now, we're gonna have some good hours of drying today. It's like 65 degrees out right now. So really, this is not having to work nearly as hard as if we're 38 degrees and wet out. It's supposed to rain tonight, so I'm gonna hop under there with the shovel. We're gonna try to get all that, those little fines and stuff cleaned up. It's a lot easier cleaning them when they're dry. Is that a red bee's wings? They're super messy. They float everywhere and they get in your eyeballs and they don't feel very good. And then this is literally just cornmeal. This is like ground up corn. You can watch it just fall right through these screens on the dryer. The real question is, where is that pile of corn coming from? Oh wow, that's stuck on there. So far we've pretty much gone through a tank of these every single day. About a thousand gallons a day is what we've been running for LP through the dryer. Now I'm gonna try to climb up there and get all those red bees wings off the top of the dryer with the broom. So that way you can just breathe a little bit better. That's kind of one thing with the dryers, you just gotta make sure we're letting it be able to breathe. Just like with an air filter in your car, or an air filter in your air conditioner, if it's all plugged up, it doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. Oh sweet, they got the new hydraulic ladder. This thing's awesome. Oh yeah, we dirty. Real dirty. If you've ever walked by your dryer vent while it's drying a load of clothes, it's got kind of that moistness to it coming out at you and then you have your neighbor right beside putting up a new deck and he's cutting with the saw and sawdust is floating on you and it's sticking to you and then your local movie theater right across the street is cooking popcorn and it smells like popcorn well combine all those together that's exactly what it feels like being out here right now uh hey guys i'm kind of stuck up here until you come get me with the skid loader the ladder's too short <laughs> worth of work all cleaned up under there got the top all cleaned off we got a brand new dryer well we got some time to kill now so we're gonna go down to uncle arlen's we're gonna finish pulling the fence that we started this summer but first i am going to grab my burrito <sighs> now half of my family is mexican and i've been around them for a few years now so i think i can confidently say this now as a fellow white Midwestern, no spice, no, like, there's this thing out there called salt, by the way, Brenda. You should use it sometime on your chicken. But I found the secret. When you go to a Mexican restaurant and you're like, oh, man, this is really good. What do they make this with? The secret is limes. They call them lemons. 
I don't know, these, these are clearly limes, but limons, that's what they call them, limon. But oh, you put this on your food, mmm. Secret unlocked. So right here is where the old house used to be. Right behind Cooper's truck was the old driveway. So we already got from the old driveway down to the corner of the field pulled. Now we're gonna pull from the driveway up to the neighbors on the north. So when we get in here with the mower, get all this mowed. And really we need to do all the way up to those trees up there, then all the way across the back, and then all the way back down. But that's for another day. So this is the ancient fence pulling method that the cavemen used where they just simply roll the woven wire with the T-bar posts and everything with the skid loader. And then once it gets big and fluffy, then they just stomp it down and they continue to do it until it's too big. Or you run out of wire, whatever comes first. Gotta make sure you don't get the barbed wire wrapped up in your tracks or stuck in your finger. Both are bad. That's about as big as they get. We're gonna throw it in the oven at 400 degrees and It'll burn all that stuff out of there, then we'll bring it to the scrapyard. Holy oh, speaking solid. <laughs> this particular section of the fence does not have many wooden posts in it, so pretty fast going, because you pretty much pull everything out with the forks. If the fence came unhooked from a steel pole, then we just have the tree puller, we'll come and pull it right out. But uh, one that's got a wooden post, like every two, those ones can take a little while longer. If you have more barbed wire, it takes longer. Woven wire is definitely Cadillac of picking up with the caveman method. Fence is out. Now we're gonna check the bends, see if we got enough room. We figure there's four semis left over there in the field west of Dad's house. So if we can at least get enough room to get the three semis dumped, then by the time we get three semis picked, hopefully another load's ran through the dryer, then we'll be able to get four. We're just concerned because it's supposed to rain for a few days and on the field west of dad's house has a completely brand new waterway system in it. So we'd rather not drive through that when it's kind of spongy. We got room in the red Volvo, that's empty. Red freight liner is full. Gray freight liner is emptying. <laughs> well, we're gonna go try it. The dryer's been running for like four hours since we quit. Just assume every two hours is one semi load through the dryer. So basically we cleared up enough room for two semis. <laughs> We're gonna let it run a little longer. Dad's gonna dump the third semi. We have both the carts full right now. So that's basically two semis right there. So basically, uh, I'm saying basically a lot right now, but we're gonna be able to pick one new semi and empty the carts and then fill them back up again. And probably how we're gonna be able to get done tonight. There's just something about watching equipment drive through the field at night with the lights on. There goes load number one for the night. We have ourselves a rider. Hey, you can't drive, you don't have thumbs. You don't have thumbs. This is going to be close. We pulled that one on. We think we got enough room in the cooling bin. Not the cooling bin, the wet holding hopper bottom bin for that semi. So that one's gonna be empty. The Great Freightliner, this one's empty. Cooper City has four rounds left. Oh, geez, we're looking at the sun. Woo, ciao, here comes Zach flying through. Woo. That's so quiet and smooth, my goodness. This semi is now full and the tarp on it is not very waterproof. So, oh, geez, there is a bump there. We're just gonna pull this in the big machine shed. We are full of corn. Got done, they're taking the head off the combine. We're gonna put that in the main heated shop. We're gonna put the John Deere in the main heated shop. And then the 340 that's blending us right now, we can roll the tarp on it. But that one's full, that one's empty. We'll probably end up putting that in the shop last, so that way make sure the combine and the corn head fit in there first. Zach's characteristic inside the tractor, he keeps it immaculate in here on the floor. He's got the DeWall vacuum. But he turns the seat sideways, so that way he can stretch his legs out here. And whenever you get in, it's always like this. When we put the combine in the shop, it looks a little obnoxious having the unloading auger out. You realize how long it is once it's in the shed there. You just gotta be careful when you have it out like that. When you go to fold it back in, make sure you hit the right button, not the one that makes it go out, because when you make it go out a little more, it actually goes higher and it puts a big dent in the ceiling. Ask dad how he knows that. That card is tall. Look at it compared to that one. There we go. It looks like a nice spot. 
I like how when we drive the semis on the concrete, you see all the dust that falls out of the wheels. <laughs> it's got a nice trail. We got the field west of Dad's house done, so now all we have left is the field around Dad's house, Hanson Farm, Bush Farm, and we got about 15 acres left here behind my house. I was a little too wet, so about 300 acres to go, and we are done with corn harvest. And it's just incredible how quick it goes. That's all I got for tonight. I'm gonna go to bed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.